that's true okay so uh welcome welcome to another session this evening session uh we're going to we're going to learn how to uh, design the libraries and uh, we're going to design specifically the Atmega a, a, a library for let route and uh, it will include a, a few components okay so to to design a library in keypad you have to use uh, so two things two things are required you need a symbol the, the symbol is like the circuit uh, the schematic representation of that component and then you need the footprint the, the footprint is the 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 form factor or the nature of the actual component okay so what we're going to do uh, the the ic that we want to use uh at mega ic let's actually bring up its um, data sheet let's bring a data sheet and then we'll work with it okay so we need at mega 328 data sheet and in, I think during the second session of first, I mentioned uh, we checked it out. Uh, so let's see. It's a, the, the, there are three different packages for that IC, but um, because we will be soldering this, and uh, not everybody has a lot of expertise, expertise with soldering, we'll be using the DIP version, which is a dual inline package. So we have this. Uh, I think this is the uh qfn version this is what i usually use i have not used this particular version the mlf before uh please can you hear me uh, i have not used it yeah before. i can i can hear you oh, okay uh there is supposed to be a dip version what's wrong now the, the uh, one thing you should know the p mappings the dip has 28 things but the LF uh, QFN version, for instance, has uh, 20, uh, 32 pins. Okay, and it seems I don't have. The, let me see if there is another version of it. Because there's supposed to be the DIP version. Uh, okay, so at mega 328p data sheet. So when you are working with these things, please just be careful because um, let me try another version. All right, so let's try this one low power. Everything, I don't know, maybe it's network, it's like everything is just misbehaving. Let me check this one. Huh? I think it's the same thing. Okay, ordering information uh, package. We want DIP. Hmm. We want DIP, dual in my package. And we have anything like that. There's supposed to be a DIP. Anyways, we could still work. We could still, uh huh. Very good. Very good. That's what I'm looking for. So this is the DIP version, dual inline package. So you can see that it has 28 pins. So if you actually create your your library with the 32 pin version and you try to associate it with this, it's not going to work. Okay. So take note of that. Uh, fortunately. I think uh, we, we would be superimposing it on the Arduino pinout. Okay, that's what we are designing for. So we, we would we superimpose it to the Arduino pinout. But first of all, let's let, let me just open an Arduino pinout. Arduino uh, pinout so that we can get the mapping properly. Okay, so this is good. Uh, can I open this alone? Fantastic. Zoom in on this. I 
I'm not very clear, but I think we can still work with it. Not very clear. All right, so I'm going to move this here and put this by its side so that we can reference the two of them at the same time. Okay. Okay, so you can see that we need 28 pins from 1 up to 6, okay? Now, whenever you pick a pinout for things like this, uh, the, the data sheet for things, components like this, there is usually a pin description. And if you want to build a library for it, you should probably check that pin description, okay? You should, you should always check it. So let's look at uh, pin description. Let me zoom out on this. Okay. Oh. Wow, this is not an actual. <laughs> this is not. Uh -huh, okay, pin description. That's good. That's good. So let's start from here. Let's start from here. Okay. So let's let's first of all create the library. So to do that, let's go to symbol editor. Go to symbol editor and this is where you create your libraries and also manage them okay so anytime i i already have a library which is electronics and i have i have designed a lot of stuff in there already okay all these are libraries that i have uh, all these are items in my library okay so we are going to create a new one. So to do that, we come into new file, new library. Okay. Uh, this is going to be global. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, let's just create this for this project. And then we will call this library Let's Route. Okay. So I'm going to save it in my Let's Route folder. Okay. So I'll call this key card. Now let me first create a folder key card. And inside it, I'll create let's route. Okay, so I'll call the library let's route. Okay. So now if I come here, let's route, you can see that it has been registered. Okay. So let's want it to be, and as it stands, so the library is a collection of the component symbols, okay, and footprint, okay. So this library could house anything that we create. Now we're creating two different uh, components in in uh, component symbols in this program. We will create for the at mega three two eight, and we also create for an FTDI uh, programmer, okay. So let's first create for the at mega to do that self. So we have created a library and now we are adding a new symbol okay so the the circuit symbol is not the library itself i think myself i've always been mixing the names up but i need you to understand that now we will call this 80 mega 328p okay and yeah isis are usually symbolized by you keep it like this now the first thing i want us to do is to uh put in the pins is that okay we are, we are going to bring out the pins uh starting from pin number one now whenever you are creating a pin you have to provide a name for the pin and the number yeah ajiku emmanuel go ahead uh, i think i i lost where <laughs> we are creating the library Okay. Yeah, we are creating a library for the Art Mega 328. I sorry, a footprint, yes, for the uh, Art Mega 328. Yeah. Oh, why did I say footprints? Okay. Yeah, you understand. Okay, so we need to give the pin name and the pin number. Now the pin number is very important because that is how key card maps the pins to your actual footprint. Okay, so uh let's go. 
I wish I had multiple screens. Um, let me see if I could still do some adjustments and bring in this guy. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I really don't like. Okay, so pin number one is reset. Okay, so it's, it's a reset pin. So over here, let's create it. And again, when you are creating the library, please make sure your your grid, okay, your grid is on 15 mils. Very, very important, okay? All right, so we call this reset. Now, usually, you see, the reset has a bar on top of it, okay? The way you do that is, um, library, remember? Uh, a tilde sign then braces then the name of the signal okay so i'm going to call it rst but if you want to put this bar on top this is this is how you do it okay i think in altium you use backslash uh you know, backslash on the letters or you could do a project based configuration and put a backslash there okay now the most important thing in fact the name is not as important as the pin number the moment you miss on the pin number, everything would go bad, okay? So this is pin number one. Now, each signal has, it has a type, okay? It, 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 it has an electrical type, okay? And usually, you can get that, the type of that pin from the description. So let's look for the reset pin. It says, if reset, blah, 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 pin six is an IO, Pins this is used as an IO note that uh, let me zoom out uh, more. Okay. And the information I'm looking for, looking for low level on this pin for longer than uh, post width, post length will re generate a reset. Okay. You need the clock is running. Shorter pauses are not guaranteed to generate a reset. Okay. So this PCIO is actually, and so over here, look at this, PC6, okay, is used as an IO, okay, that is if RST disable fuses program, then it's an IO, but if it is not, then it is used as a reset, a reset, uh, a reset pin, but in our, in our case, we are going to use it as a reset pin, okay, you are going to use it as a reset pin, not as um, not as an IO pin. So I think what I'll do is set it as PC6. I'm going to set it as a, a passive a passive uh, electrical type, okay? Because uh, we we will just be using it for resetting our our pin, okay? So I'm I'm just going to make it a passive type to make it a passive type now these things you probably usually have to set them just because of uh, dc uh, drc checking drc stands for design rule checking okay if you for instance set something as a power output and you connect another power output to it the key card is going to complain so that's why i am doing this okay so i'll put this there and the rest of the things uh, oh, this is an active low, uh, so I'll select an inverted clock. No, this is actually not inverted clock. Let me just select inverted, okay? And uh, that will be our first thing, which is the reset pin. Then you could see that pin two, uh, which is also PDO, is RXD. Is that okay? RXD. Now, if we look at the Arduino, if you check it on the Arduino pinouts, uh, if you check it on the Arduino pinouts, uh, let me probably open this in another tab. All right, so you can see that RxD is actually digital pin zero, okay? And on the Arduino board, you know that the R, uh, digital pin zero is the Arduino's Rx, okay? So P0, P, uh, P1, I think. PD0, PD1 are used for uh, UART communication. Is that okay? So let's go back to um, let's go back to that. Yes. So you can see RxD and TX. So 
we'll put the name here rx and then the pin number is two remember i said the pin number is very very important okay and uh, the electrical type here now we could use it uh, as an i it's actually an io pin it's actually an io now if it could be used as both input and output then we can set it as a bi-directional and actually this this can this is a general purpose io in the first place however we can use it for uh rx com and tx we can use it for uart communication i'm going to leave it at bi-directional that means signal can go both ways so that in case somebody is using it for an io or something like that okay i'm just going to leave it like that but don't forget to change this graphic style okay so that's will be pin number two i'll do the same for pin number three that is tx and then uh, the pin number is three please take note pin number is the most important thing here then we have number four uh so this on the arduino would be d2 okay this is arduino d1 uh, sorry it's arduino d d0 d1 d2 is that okay and if you know arduino will realize that the pin 2 and pin 3 are also used for interrupts that's why we have the int 0 and int 1 on them because you can use them for interrupt so this is pin 2 it's also GPI, so we leave it at bi-directional. And then we have D3. So I'm labeling them according to the Arduino standard because that's what I intend to use them for. Okay. Now, take note, if you want to design for the keycard community, there is actually a page that describes the process and some of the standards that you have to maintain. But over here, that's not what we are trying to achieve. So we are, we are good. We are good. All right. So this is pin number four. Oh, hey, sorry, that's pin number five. Okay, so please make sure you don't miss on these things. Okay, uh, pin, I think I'm making, so pin one, two, three, so change this. Uh, this is supposed to be pin number four. Okay. And it's usually a good thing to go in order, okay, so that you can easily tra trace any error. All right, the next one is definitely D4. Definitely D4. And then uh, that is pin number six. Okay, definitely D4 and it's pin number six. Now, let us cross check and be sure so you can see that zero one two three four okay so everything that we are doing is right okay let's continue we number seven is vcc and vcc here is actually going to be five votes so i'm going to label it as five votes and that will be pin number seven now this is power input okay this is power input so i'm going to set it as power input then the next one is gnd which is ground and it's pin 8 again that is also power input those are the ground and power pins of arduino all right then we come to b p uh, pb6 okay if you are not sure now you can see that we have x tau 1 x tau 2 this two are definitely the crystal oscillator line okay but just to be sure you go back to the Arduino and you can see that exactly these are the two, uh, these are the, what do we call it, the crystal oscillator line, a pin. So let's label them as such. So we call this XTL1 and XTL2, uh, sorry, XTL1 and the pin, that is pin number. Come on. Uh, okay, so pin number XTL1, that will be pin number 9. Okay, remember I said this, and this is definitely a passive, a passive line. Okay, so we keep it as such. Then we do for the next XTL2. Pin number 10. 
and also it's a passive line the next is pin number 11 and that is uh, pd5 pd5 so let's cross reference with arduino uh, pin number 11 which is pd5 that is digital pin 5 okay digital pin 5 so from there we have digital pin 5 6 7 and 8 and we will take note of that okay we take note of that and uh, one thing you can see that uh, some of these pins are capable of pwm usually when i'm building my i6 i uh, when i'm building schematics for myself i want to keep this kind of information on the uh, symbol so that anytime I'm designing, I don't have to come back to the reference uh, to reference from the data sheet. Okay, so if you look at P number pin 11, it is pin 5 and it is capable of PWM. So, what I'm going to do is to put a tilde sign on it and call it uh, D5. Okay, this will tell me that this is one of the pins that is capable of uh, pulse weight modulation. Okay. And this should be a bi-directional. It could be used as output or input. And uh, yes. So let me go back to pin number. Pin number three is also capable of PWM. And set it as such. Okay. So pin number, uh, what do we call it? Pin number three, that is D3, is also capable of uh, pulse rate modulation. So I'm going to put this till this sign on it. And of course, if you look on the Arduino, you see that the Arduino indicates pulse rate modulation capabilities on a pin using the uh, till this sign. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. All right, now let's continue. So we just placed pin 11. So the next pin is going to be pin 12. And this will be D6. This will be D6. And that's pin 12. And again, it's bidirectional and it's capable of pulse rate modulation. So I'll put it on. Uh, the next is uh, D7. D7. And that is pin number 13. Uh, D7 is not capable of pulse rate modulation, so no, no, uh, what do we call? Okay, then the next is D8. So creating a library is just this boring. Imagine you are creating a library for a component with, let's say, 144 uh, pins. I just have to do that. I don't know if KiCad has another way of doing it, but this is how I do it. Okay, so D8, that is going to be pin 14. It's going to be pin 14, and it's also bidirectional. D8 is also not capable of uh, pulse width, so we leave it like that. Okay, then whoa. D8, this is pin 14. Please, when you are creating a library, be very, very careful, okay? All right, let's continue. The next is uh, pin 15. Pin 15 and uh, pin 15, that is D9, is capable of pulse width modulation. So that will be D9, that's capable of pulse width. So I'm going to put this till this sign on it, and then uh, that will be a guide for me. This is pin 15, it's bi directional, yes. Uh, the next one is D10. Digital pin 10 is also capable of pulse rate modulation, and uh, that is number 16. Uh, the next one is uh, D11, also capable of pulse rate modulation, and that is pin number 17. Pin number 17. Then uh, we have pin 12. Now, pin 12 is not capable of pulse rate modulation. And its physical pin is pin 18. So we keep it there. Next is D13. And uh, that is physically connected to pin 19. Not capable of pulse width modulation. Uh, then we have another V something. It's not clear here. Let me check it in. AVC, analog voltage reference. That is what I think uh, on the Arduino board they, 
the there is the, there is a IO ref I think yes and I do know what it is labeled as IO ref mm -hmm. it's labeled as, as IO ref so that is like analog voltage reference or something mm -hmm. that is a ref oh come on come on come on, come on. IO ref IO ref is supposed to be let me see let me check something let me cross reference uh what is IO ref supposed to be I O ref A ref that's number twenty one is A ref and P number I O ref is yeah so that's actually I O ref yes I was right that's actually I O ref and uh, I but they didn't put a P number here this provide a logic reference voltage yes for shields that use it it is connected to V bus. Oh, okay. Then what, what is connected to AVC? You have A ref here already. That's P21. Uh, we are looking for P number, P number 20. P number 20. P number 20. 1918. Uh, 19. Now that's interesting. What is P20? I never the same P20. AVC, AVC. Okay, let me check. Let me, ah, we even have the data sheet open here, so let's check that. I seem not to. Uh -huh, AVC. The this is the supply voltage pin for E. Analog to digital converter. Hmm. It should be externally connected to VCC, even if ADC is not used. If ADC is used, it should be connected to VCC through a low pass filter. Notes uh, use digitally. These people are not confusing me. A ref is the analog reference pin for AD converter. That's okay. Uh, AVC is the supply voltage pin. For the AD converter, okay, 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 it should be externally connected to VCC, even if the ADC is not used. Now, if the ADC is used, it should be connected to VCC through a low, a low pass filter. That's interesting. Okay, anyways, all right, so let's come back and then continue with what we are doing. So this is AVCC, AVCC, and obviously it's a power pin, but it's physically connected to pin 20. So power inputs, it's a power input pin. Okay, uh, that's good. The next one is A ref, A ref analog reference and uh, it's its pin is 21 there is also some form of power but i think this guy provides output because uh, it's like a, a place that people a place that you can measure the, the voltage level for the analog analog as uh, whatever reference uh, the reference voltage for the analog uh, pins so i'll put it at power output and then uh, number 22 is another ground pin that is number 22 this is power inputs keep it here okay then we have the next thing will be now this is p uh p whatever i can't see it well pz pc zero i think but that's where the analog pin starts from okay so a zero the next thing is actually a0 and that is pin number 23 uh we are going to set it as bi-directional because those analog pins could still be used for digital operations okay so let's give it that bi-directional and then 
A0, A1, A that will be number 24. Also by directional, uh, A2, that will be 25. Also by directional, uh, A3, that will be 26. 26. Okay, that will be 26. Uh, I hope you guys are following. Okay, I think I made a mistake. Instead of 25, I wrote something else. Here? Yeah. yeah. So that will be 2, 5, not S5. Okay. Okay. So just a few. Emmanuel, uh, find yourself. Uh, just, just follow what you are doing and try to chip in. I'm just creating pins for the library that we are about to design okay so just wherever you are just stop thinking too much and look at what is happening <laughs> that is how you find yourself all right so a4 analog pin 4 is mapped to pin 27 to pin 27 and we are also going to use it as a bi-directional pin and then finally we have a5 which is pin 28 also by direction now if you are using the qfn package you have 32 pins right and uh those 32 pins actually come with additional uh, two two additional um pins a6 and a7 okay but we don't have that on this guy okay so now that we are done we have to draw out uh we, we, we have to create the library okay so usually this is what i'll do draw a rectangle to represent the library and uh, you can right click on the, the rectangle and set some properties for instance line width i'm going to set it as 0 0.5 mm okay just to make it a little thicker i think this is too much so i'm going to set it at 0 0.3 mm good and i can also right click on it and go to properties fill with background color that gives me this yellowish thing okay now definitely this the size is not enough for what i intend to do so i'm going to stretch it out by dragging and up like that stretch it yes let's see how it goes okay now usually when i'm designing isis uh, sorry when i'm designing this kind of component i like to put all my higher voltage sources up and ground voltage down is that okay so uh starting with i have one ground here i'll move it and put it down here now when you are placing you should make sure that these things go inside the naming goes inside and the, uh, where this side comes out that's where you you need for your connection okay so the name part should go inside okay uh probably let me just let me even just put it here yep and i have another ground here so what i um what i usually do is to gather my grounds at one place now i also have uh, three two things that uh that's how to reference power i'm going to put this one has to be connected to vcc which is five volts and uh, this is my five volts itself so i'll put that here then my reset spin i always keep it on top somewhere like that yep okay now my crystal and crystal oscillator i prefer to put it somewhere here i prefer to put them somewhere here and then put some space in between them now the reason i'm putting the space you would uh, understand it later so i put some space in there now this a ref and other signals yes i keep all of them on top here like that Okay, a ref. 
Uh, now I'm left with only the digital pins. And for the digital pins, I like to arrange them like how they appear in the, uh, how they appear on the microcontroller. So starting from bottom up. So RXTX, RXTX over there, then uh, the rest will continue. Okay, so from RSTX, I have pin those pins. And then uh, the next will be pin 5 up to 7. This forms one block on the Arduino. So I also usually like to keep them like that. Okay. Uh, okay. Then D8 to D13 also forms another block and then we know like that so i'll keep those guys here okay and then finally i'll put my analog pins somewhere here like that okay so you can see that the the, the size that i left for my thing is way too big so i'm going to squeeze it a bit from both directions Okay, and uh, also from the top to the bottom. All right, then now we arrange them. And take note, always keep your, always keep your grade on 50 mils, okay? Always keep your grade on 50 mils. Okay, I think I like this. I'll uh, bring these guys here a little bit down and bring my over there. Keep this guy up and up and put some spacing in here and there and just let this guy have some room to breathe. I think I, I like this. Now let's center it. I think this is okay and we are done that's all that's all it takes to de design a library uh, if you want you could do more labeling okay so let's let's put a couple of that there so i'm gonna draw a line from here to here uh, from here to here and edit it point uh, five mm not too much, 0.3 mm, and then I'll put the text analog piece, okay? Now, take note, I do things this way just to make uh, life easier, okay? It doesn't mean you should do the same thing. In fact, if you even click the Art Mega IC in KitKat, you won't see this, you won't see things like that, but I prefer to keep things done this way. So anytime I pick the IC, I can always connect the components without going to check the data sheets. Okay, that's why I do things this way. All right, so uh, over here, we have 0.3 mm, and I'm going to put another label here that will be D, D8 to D10. Okay, need to be 13 just like that and then set it to be bold okay then do the same thing like that and like i keep saying this is totally not necessary <laughs> this, this will be d2 to d7 Okay, this is to this seven and uh, point three mm. Okay, uh, okay. Then this guy usually call them watts. Point uh, three mm. I'm going to. Uh, I'll call it watts. Okay, 
put them here and this and boom okay then maybe I'm going to write at mega 3 328p okay pico the pico powered version and uh, set it bold probably text size let's go 2.5 mm put it somewhere here the middle and just a little more description dip version not necessary once again understand when things are necessary and things are not okay and that is by by just doing this i've actually designed a library a, a component footprint for my at mega ic okay now we are we, we are done but we still have to do some house cleaning stuff the first thing we got to do is to set the definitions or some some parameters on this okay to do that we can go to settings and what we are going to set would be these values here okay and i demonstrated during in the afternoon how i do it and i'm going to do it again so what i do is go to digikey digikey yes and then search for the component so at mega 328p okay so this is under microcontrollers and the one that we need is exactly this okay so we click on it fantastic and we have the information here so manufacturer we, call, we click on this to copy and we can put those information here so let's add manu manu or manufacturer okay and that will be microchip then uh, the next thing we need will be the product number so copy that put that number okay this is supposed to help us generate the bill of material when we have to source component and product description description and put it in there the next will be let's put this detailed description to detailed description and i'm gonna put this then the next thing is um, the data sheet data sheet data sheet where do i get data sheet okay. so you see this are some information about it uh, do i have any link to data sheet usually they have a link to the data sheet and it seems it's not here. It's not here. It's not here. Okay, but we could actually check that on the Art Megas website itself. Oh, actually, we even have it here. So you can copy it and then put uh, data sheets. Put it here. Okay. Oh, actually, there is description here. So let's copy this detailed description and we can delete that field and rather put it here okay the keyword will be microcontroller um, let's call it Arduino Uno just in case I'm searching uh, at mega at mega 328 okay let's also put in DIP all right and i think that will be that we are done okay now after designing this remember we also oh now you can see that some some uh some things are printed here and they are colored okay 
they are colored uh, we need to fix that it's not right we don't need this information popping up when we are using the foot uh, the, uh, the symbol right so we have to turn them off so we have to go back to where we set them so yes we need the reference we need the value but we don't want the manufacturer to show neither the product number and the description okay so we turn them off i see that they change color that means that they are hidden they are hidden okay so the last thing we have to do is to assign uh, a footprint okay the footprint is how it will physically look uh, on our pcb now fortunately if we go back to uh if we go back to big key sites if we go back to big key sites uh We the, the package is DIP28. Is that okay? DIP28. And let's see if we case is 28 DIP, yes, and this is the dimension. So the, the width is 7.62. Okay, now this is very interesting. This is very important because there are a lot of uh packages with DIP28 but different width. Okay, so this information here is very, very important. All right, so how do we attach a footprint? Come to this settings again, and then over here, you could see footprint. Fortunately, this is a standard IC, and because of that, there are standard footprints for it that we don't have to redesign our own footprint. Is that okay? IC footprint, IC and transistor footprints, uh, you can get them under packages, okay? so. These are everything that Kita has on ICs and transistors. Now, we even have packages for BGS, bulk grade arrays, and it's about right now we want DIP. Okay, so if you click on it, we are looking for DIP28. So DIP28. So that is this zone. And if you remember correctly, on the key card, uh, digi key, we had the, the width is what? 7.62. Okay, so we select 7.62, where is it, 7.62, so this is how it looks like, okay, uh, but usually I don't like this, this, uh, the, the parts are too small, so I prefer using the long parts, okay, so I'm going to select this. Now, when you are selecting a component and you are interested in 3D view, then you can check whether that component has a 3D model or not by clicking on this. Okay. Uh, if you are if you're a key card user, you would love 3D. So yes, it has a 3D. It has what do we call it? Uh, it has a 3D model. So that is exactly what we want. Okay. Uh, however, look at something. We actually need a socket. Because technically, what we want to place on our, what we want to place on our work is, is a socket, not uh, the IC itself. Okay, so something like this. But I think let's let's just forego this and pick the IC itself, long part, and bundle it, and done. Just that we have finished designing the Art Mega library. Okay, so right now we have just one symbol in our let's route library, which is good. So you save it, close it, and now you can go back to the schematic to use it. All right, any questions up to this point? Any questions up to this point? If you have any question, I'll be glad to answer that. Any questions? Come again. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. So now, how do we use it? We now can place it just like any other library. Okay. So we are looking for at mega three two eight. 
okay so you see i have it so my library has also popped up that is in and we can see the let route library too here telling you that we also have it but by we uh, arduino actually already has this library okay that we could have used but we just wanted to learn how to design it ourselves so let's use the one that we have now let's put let's bring what a uh, key card actually has uh, and compare it with our work and see how different it is uh, somebody's mic is giving feedback let's see what key card has okay so let me also put what i have designed for myself and bring what key card has so that will be at mega three two eight. Please, uh, somebody's mic is giving feedback. Okay. All right. So we let's look for one uh, VIP version. Yes. So this will be that. Now this is what is in key card by default okay you can see that they they use exactly uh, what they have on the how do i call it they use exactly what they they have on the uh, uh, data sheet right so that means if i want to use this i will have to be going back to reference what p0 is if i don't have it off of it right but when I design mine like this, it gives me the flexibility of doing things as I need. So I can pick this and route it anytime, okay, without going back to my schematic, to the data sheet to look like to look for what or how it is done and all this kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So in this work, we are using the let route library. So let's just keep this one. Now let's create the library and uh, let's create the circuit around the schematic this is where we get to create the arduino itself okay and the first thing you want to do is to put in your power sources this arduino is going to operate on five volts so i'll bring the five volts line here okay and then i'm going to link it up fortunately both pins have to be linked to both pins have to be linked to five volts so i can connect them like this and this is also an, one of the times where you need a decoupling capacitor okay so i'll go in here bring a decoupling capacitor let's pick this guy 10 uf would be good let's bring 10 uf and i would like to put two of them each one for each each ic uh, one for each pin and uh, rearrange this one here okay you up you down and you here and you there okay and remember when we are connecting decoupling capacitors we reference them to ground okay they should they should be connected between the source and the ground all right so now do that 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 and connect and also from here to here from here to here to there actually let me just add a little aesthetic to it all right so that's that that solves that solves the power supply okay we've, we've connected this uh this values now about why i'm using these values uh what 10 uf ceramic capacitors they they are they hold enough to to serve as the coupling cast for these guys okay they they, they 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 are okay they are just okay and i know that we're using them okay now the next thing is to hook up this reset button now the reset button is one interesting to, thing to look at okay first of all uh the reset button has to be by default connected to five volt it is uh, the signal on it is by default supposed to be high okay 
the moment it goes low within a certain time period, then the Arduino resets. Okay, the resetting of the Arduino just means it restarts. So the question is, how do we ensure that the reset pin will always be a default high? The way you do that is connecting a resistor in such a way that we call it a pull-up resistor. So let me grab one resistor from here and uh, connect it over here, okay? Now, this resistor has to have a very high value because uh, you actually don't care about current flow, okay? So, thank you. Oh, sorry. So, I'm going to use 10K for this. And pulling it up, uh, pull, pulling it up simply means that you are joining you are connecting that signal through a resistor to a high the high voltage source okay high voltage, that's what we mean by pull up okay so i hook this remember this is still five volts and hook it to the resistor then it means that i have defaulted this resistor signal to a default high that means that every time it will have the high uh high logic on it. Is that okay? This is necessary. Uh, if you don't do this, one experience that I got with this, I, I failed to put a resistor on it because the, I think the data sheet said there is an in, in, internally pulled up resistor, but it didn't actually work for me. So I had to actually adjust my circuit and put this in there. So since then, I always put it up. I always put it up. Okay, so actually this is what I wanted to set, 10K. All right. Then, one more thing that we need to do on the reset pin, okay? There is something else that will be referencing this reset pin. So we're going to put a label on it at RST. And again, I'm going to put uh, RST like that so that I have the bar on top of it, okay? So by labeling it, anytime I label any other signal as RST, it means that I've connected them together, okay? Now, we would be programming this. Okay, I, I, won't, I won't do this here at the moment. The reset pin is physically connected to a button on the Arduino, okay? So you can press the button and then the reset pin goes slow. So that means we have to also connect that. So let's bring a button. And uh, we just need a push button. So uh, push button. Okay, so we can bring this symbol connected here. Now let's call it RST. RST button. And uh, reorganize this. And that. Okay, so this is just a switch. Switch. Okay. And then, uh, so I'm going to explain a concept to you why this works. Okay. I'm going to explain it to you. So let's connect this to ground. Okay. So you see, this uh, pull up resistor always keep the resistor at a higher volt or five, at five volts, right? But the moment you press this re uh, reset button, then current flows, uh, this, this point is linked to ground, setting it to a zero volt. That means the moment it detects the zero volt, then it causes the pin to what? To reset, okay? So that is why we, re we connect the resistor this way. Now, when uh, you connect a button this way, this configuration, we call it active low, okay? Because when you press the button, it sends a low signal, not a high signal. Another way of putting it is that when you press on the button, the signal changes from high to low. Okay, so we call this the active low button configuration. Now, if you look at the A ref, let's go back to the data sheets. Uh, the data sheet A ref. Okay, so A ref is the analog reference pin for the AD converter. Is that okay? Now, what happens is that Arduino allows you to set a different voltage for your analog reference uh, as your analog reference now by default okay by default it is supposed to be five volts it's supposed to be five volts however 
assuming I'm working with a signal and I want uh, maybe the maximum this signal can reach is three volts, then Arduino actually allows me to set three volts to this pin. And this is what will be used as the reference pin for the analog to digital converter. Is that okay? Now, usually, well, the way we connect it, since it is supposed to be a, a reference pin, it has to be very, very peaceful. Is that okay? It has to be very, very peaceful. And that means we will have to put a cap, a capacitor over there to ensure that it is stable. Okay, so I'm going to connect a 10 UF capacitor over here and then uh, use it as a decoupling capacitor. So tie this place to ground. And I'm going to label this as a ref. Okay, label this as a ref. So we have a ref and yeah. Okay, so we, we are still making progress. All right, now we have the we are at the analog pins. Fortunately, we don't have to do much over here. All we have to do is to hook them up to a port, okay? And the port that we need, the port that you see on Arduino, we call them header socket, header pin socket, okay? But in the schematic, we will call them connectors, con underscore. And here we need one uh, row, uh, one row by six pins or six columns. Okay, so and we need a female version. So we select this one. Gonna rotate it and then put it right here. Okay, and I'll call this analog. Analog pins. Call it analog pins. Okay. Now I can choose to label the individual pins or not. Uh, but I think I'm gonna do that. Hmm, should I? Okay, so let's connect them. This to that, that to that, that to that. If we label it, it will make it easier when we are routing okay so I'm, I'm i'm just going to throw some labels on them i think there is supposed to be some shortcuts for key card okay let's call this there's supposed to be some shortcut to to meet the process i forgot it okay so this will be analog pin zero okay uh no 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 i think i i saw that in our instead a1 then that will be a2 this will be a3 this will be a4 and finally we have a5 okay so and just that we are done with the analog pins Okay, so next on our list, we have the crystal oscillator. Now, Arduino recommends, I think, from 16 megahertz to about 20 megahertz or so, crystal oscillator. Is that okay? And the one that I usually use for my work, I think it's HC, HC49. HC49, that is the crystal oscillator I usually use. So let's go and choose a crystal okay a two pin crystal small uh yeah over here choose this then the way you connect it just like this so let me bring it somewhere here give it a value of hc yeah hc 49 hc 49 i'll cross check if i have to okay put this guy here and put it right. So the crystal oscillator is supposed to connect to the IC this way. Is that okay? But you also need some capacitors on this crystal oscillators. And one of the recommended values is, or even what I usually use, is 22 picofarads. So I'm going to set this to 22 picofarads. We talked about capacitors this afternoon. If you weren't here, please. Uh, after this, I'm going to upload the videos 
we can check them out. I will talk about capacitors. Okay. All right. So uh, let me just move this here and uh, that over here. So connect this and then duplicate and put it here too. Probably move this guy down and down. Also connect. Now take note of how I'm making the connection. Okay. This is exactly how you are supposed to do it. Now this side is supposed to be tied to the ground. Supposed to be tied to the ground. So we are using a crystal oscillator and uh, it requires this two 22 picofarad capacitors. Okay. Then fi uh, we, we come, not finally, sorry. We need to connect the ground. That's very simple. Do that and that and have connected the ground. Okay. Yeah. So any questions up to this point? Any questions up to this point? Any questions up to this point, please? Okay, all right. So let's finish up. We're almost done. So you see that actually creating the <laughs> creating the circuit behind the uh, the Atmega mega itself is very simple. Okay, there is no much hassle to it. So let's finish up. Uh, these guys actually we don't have to do much on them. We just have to hook them to a pin. But on the Arduino they are hooked to an eight pin connector. So again, let's go grab one. So we look for corner underscore zero one. And we are looking for eight pin female. So that would be this. Let's bring it up here. And uh, let's call this D0 to D7. Okay. D0 to D7. Usually, I like to clean things up a bit. And that's. Okay, then let's connect them up. Okay. All right, uh, Christine, yes, please go ahead. Um, why are we naming them D0 to D7? And uh, as we were creating the library, we had D2 to D7. Yes, so actually, uh, it, it doesn't actually matter the on the Arduino pin, so this, I put this there because of the Arduino. Now, in the library, you see that I separated this. This is technically supposed to be part of this piece, okay? I just did this for convenience sake. Is that okay? It's not like there is any standard attached to it. No, I did it for convenience sake. So that, because usually when I am creating an Arduino project, I never use these pins for anything apart from UART communication. Is that okay? So that's why I did it. It's not like there is any specific reason. Okay. All right. So we hook this up and then uh, move these guys. And that's also okay. okay. And again, let's put the labels on them so that it would be easy. There is a shortcut for doing this that I've forgotten. Okay. So again, as usual, let's label this Rx. We could actually have done a D0 because they are actually D0. But this actually doesn't matter so far as you keep consistent uh, naming conventions or you keep the naming consistent. Okay, so this D2. D2. Okay. Oh. oh, I thought this auto increment thing was <laughs> okay, so my bad. D2. D3. There is definitely a way of, oh, sorry, D4. Definitely a way to auto bit this. I think. I should find out D5. 
and you could also use a bus the bus tool to do that but i usually prefer doing it this way d6 and finally d7 okay nicely labeled then the last thing on the list so here actually yes we have two pins over here but on the arduino they are supposed to be i think 10 but there are extra pins on them so we need a 10 pin header socket okay so we we'll go for con underscore zero one zero one and we are looking for zero one by ten female okay mounted here just like the address and i'm gonna give it a value give it a value of uh, d this will be d8 to d13 okay, let's just call it that d to d13 to move things about a bit and over there okay and let's wire them up All right, and that's good. Now, the extra pins, the next is connected to ground, the next is a ref, then we have SD and SCL. Okay, so we are going to connect them uh, as such. So that's that, that, and that. Okay, so the first one is connected to ground. So I'll duplicate and bring this ground somewhere here. Then the next one is connected to a ref, the analog reference, which we actually labeled over here. So see, I'll duplicate it or copy it and put it here. This simply means I've connected this pin to the a ref. Is that okay? So anytime the labels are the same, it means that those two pins or two points have been connected together. Then this is supposed to be SD and SCL. Now, fortunately, um, <laughs> I did I even say fortunately? On Arduino, SDA and SCL are used for what we call I2C communication. Okay, they are used for I2C communication. And A4 here is what says as the sda pin so i'll put it there and a5 is also what serve as the i uh, scl pin so just that we are done connecting up the ic you see when you understand the signals these things are not any headache they, it's, it's, it's simple to to deal with them now and the the atmega ic by default don't have programs uh, something called a bootloader on them okay a bootloader if i bring it into computer terms um, take it as your bios the, your bios is what helps your system to turn on right so without it your operating system cannot even start now uh, there is a small program that you always have to load onto the atmega ic in order to make it possible or able to load up uh, load your program when you power it okay now the way we do that is by using something called icsp uh, interface uh, or in circuit in uh, in circuit system program or something something like that icsp okay so we have to hook that up next let me leave some room here okay so to bring the icsp in key card if i type avr avr icsp6 okay that is the connector i'm looking for okay and i can just connect it up okay so let, let's actually put labels here because we need those labels for something okay so this will be d8 <laughs>
Yeah, in system programmer. Thank you, in system programmer. So we have ICSP, in circuit system programmer. Okay. All right. So uh, D9. And then we have D10 over here. Please don't be. Uh, don't be too impressed or i don't know what word to use I've, I've, you have created circuit with this ic like 100 times right so i actually know how to use it off head right but uh since probably this may be new to you it will take time for you to be familiar with ic okay so please don't don't put pressure on yourself okay all right okay and then D12 and finally we have D13. Okay, good. So now let's connect up the ICSP. All right, uh, we need a ground, so let's connect that. We need a five volt supply. Let's connect that and hook them up over there and uh, over here okay then the next thing is this ah uh, sorry so we need to connect the reset signal to this point fortunately we've already given it a label so all we have to do is to duplicate it and put it here and just that it has been connected now sck Okay, SCK, which is the serial clock line, is on the Arduino, or sorry, on the Atmega, it's actually pin 13, okay? Pin 13, I told you, I've used this IC so many times, so I, I know them inside out. So SCK is actually pin 13. MOSI, now these are something called SPI signals, okay? They are SPI signals. MOSI stands for Master Out Slaving. Okay, now the MOSI is digital pin 11. That's digital pin 11. Then MISO, master in, slave out, that is pin 12. Okay, so in, in the Atmega, these are the pins that we use for hardware SPI communication. Uh, if you are interested about that, please read, read on SPI. Okay, so that, that is all it takes to connect them. SCK pin 13, master out slave in pin 11, master in slave out on pin 12. Okay. And by using, by doing, uh, attaching this pin, we can now load bootloader onto the Atmega IC using an Arduino board, uh, uh, an already made Arduino board. Okay. All right. So I think, oh, one more thing, then we'll be done here. One more thing that will be done here. On that we know, pin 13 is actually hooked up to an LED. Okay, pin 13 is actually hooked up to an LED. So let's also do that. I'm just going to copy this guy and bring them here. Uh, bring it here. Okay, and instead of five volts over here, I'm going to duplicate this and put that there okay so that means i've connected them together and now this one i'm just going to put in a 1k resistor I'm going to put in a 1k resistor now and just that we are actually done connecting the signals for the microcontroller we actually done so let's 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 do our usual design Okay, so this will be the axe mega. A Y. Okay, I don't know. So this will be at mega three two eight p in a microcontroller interface. Micro 
<coughs> controller interface. Now this is not an interface, this is the circuit itself. Ah, it's still an interface, sorry. <laughs> okay. So we put this here and nicely done. Just roll it up a bit. Okay. And let me let me actually give this guy its own name. Uh, probably call it uh, ICSP header. ICSP header. Uh, put it here. And then move this. Yeah, uh, Christine, please go ahead. Is the difference between RCSP and RSP? They are actually the same thing. It's just it's just naming. It's just the name. Okay, the C in there means circuit. It's it's just the same thing. So in system programmer, in circuit system programmer, is they are just the same thing. I prefer the ICSP to the ISP. ISP kind of sign like the internet service provider. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in, in all my system programmer. Come again. With someone who said and said it to who said. ISP is an in system program. Yes, that is right. So if you put the C in there, it becomes in circuit system program. Okay, so it's they are the same thing. Okay, they are, they are basically the same thing. Okay. If you go online and check, so let, let me show you something. They they are basically the same thing. Uh, so look at this ICSP. Okay, Arduino. Okay, even on the Arduino body, you have labeled it as ICSP. Okay, but it's the same as the ISP thing. Or oh, let me find out. Probably if there is a difference. ICSP versus ISP. If there is any difference. So the difference between it is a hyphen. It's a hyphen. In circuit serial program. <laughs> In circuit serial programmer, so just ignore it, <laughs> they, they mean the same thing. Okay, okay, I think I'm enjoying this. All right, uh, yes, but we, we are done technically, but we are not quite done because, as it stands, yes, we can program our Arduino, but only through the ICSP header, okay. But anytime you, you program the Arduino using the ICSP header, you actually clear the bootloader. Okay, you delete the bootloader. And we don't want that. The only time, the only thing we want to do with the ICSP header is to load the bootloader, not to program it. So we need a USB to UART converter, okay, to interface so that we can load programs through USB cable to our microcontroller as we can do on a normal Arduino board, okay? That's that's what we want to do. Now, the, the, right, the, 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 the <laughs> what do you call it? The programmer that I want to use in my mind is FTR232, okay? But the last time I checked this thing, it has become very, very expensive and I don't like CH340 because you need to install drivers before you can use them. On the Arduino, Arduino uses another microcontroller, which is Atmega 16U, U2, to do that job. But I don't want to also use it. So that means I have no choice right now but to go with the... I just have to still use the FTDR. Actually, I have a couple of them in my... In my uh, components so I can use that okay so the last thing we still have one hour before this session ends the last thing we're going to interface is a, a, a controller something that would convert that would make it possible to load code through a USB port okay as it stands we haven't done that so let's do that uh, 
Should we do it the hard way or we should do it the soft way? Should we do it the hard way or should we do it the soft way? Are you okay with how to create libraries? Are you okay with that? <laughs> okay, then if, if the hard way, then let's go and create the library ourselves, okay? So that those who couldn't follow the first time would, uh, would use it as an opportunity to learn again. So we've already created our library, let's route library, right? So we're going to add another schematic to it, which is the FTDI uh, <clears throat> programmer. FTR232 programmer. Okay, so we bring this up and the library we will be saving to is Let's Route, okay? So in here, again, you click and say new symbol. Let's call this FT, FTR232. No, I think it's FT232R. Yes, FT232R, okay? That's the symbol we are going to create. And again, we need data sheet. Okay, anytime you are dealing with any components, just get the data sheet, take your time and go through the data sheet. Okay, don't be in a rush because if you rush, you end up in square one. You come back to square one and it may even cost you a lot of money. Okay, so you don't want to do that. Okay, I think I'll still keep this, but <clears throat> we're looking for FC232, okay, data sheet. Uh, there are different packages for it. I usually use this one, but then uh, since the, the board that we are designing will actually, everybody who is interested will get the chance of uh, buying uh, the, the printed board and then and then uh, we will have a, another session where we would do live soldering. Okay, we'll show that the board. So I don't want to use components that would be difficult to use. So that I can actually so that this that not everybody will have those two. So let's just go with the one of the SMD, the simple ones that we can, everyone can so that. Unfortunately, there is no DIP version for this. Okay, I prefer using this guy, this square one. The they are very small. They take little space compared to this one. Uh, but anyway. Let's just proceed. All right, so uh, you could take your time to read about all those stuff. But what I'm interested in is, uh, is this. Okay, so this is the RKO package. So the RKO is a QFN32, okay? So you make sure that is not what you are using for the one we are about to do. The one we are about to do is supposed to be, uh, come on, right? Sometimes, uh huh, good. So, this is what we want. We want the SSOP 28 lead. This is the version that we are looking for. And you can see that this is FT232RL, okay? This is RL, and the QFN package is RQ, okay? So, take note of that. Okay, so how many pins do we need? Wow, 28. That is so much. <laughs> 28. Anyway, so let's let's create the pins. Those who couldn't follow the first time when we were creating the Arduino, please uh, try as much as possible to do it this time. Okay. So I think I would SSOP package. Uh, I want the pin description, pin out description. Okay. So let's use this notes here. It will help us a lot. All right, so let's play the first thing, and now we're going to go according to the descriptions here, okay? We need to go according to the descriptions here. So the first thing that I'm going to put, that will be the USB DP. USB, USB, so that's what we call the D plus signal, okay? So USB, I'll call it D plus. And this is the pin number on the, and take note, we are, creating for the SSOP package, okay, which is the FC232RL, okay, not the RQ, is that okay? So take note of that. So this is pin number 15, and uh, says that uh, USB signal data plus incorporating internal, oh, okay, so good. 
it's you see it's incorporate internal resistor and a 1.5 kilometer pull uh, sorry kilo ohm uh, pull up resistor so now there's something called signal termination fortunately this ic already has uh, has has fit, uh, done that for us so we don't have to put any resistor on the on that signal line okay you can read more about signal termination later okay so this is an io pin okay so here you see this data sheet really makes it simple it tells you the type of pin so io pin that means we can leave it on bi-directional the next is uh, usb underscore d minus and this is pin number 16 and it is also an io pin io pin so i'll leave it like that now vcc io now, VCC IO uh, represents the voltage level of your, uh, your, the logic level that you want to use. Now, since we are using that uh, Atmega328, which is a TTL logic level, when we say that it's a TTL logic level, it means that uh, it operates at five volts. Okay, the logic, uh, a logic high is about five volts and a logic low is about zero, right? If it is CMOS, then a logic level is about 3.3 volts, okay? So that means uh, we, we, we are going to leave it open, okay? But take note, VCCIO is like the, uh, it, it tells you which uh, the logic level that it should use, okay? So if I connect this pin to, let's say, five volts, it means that the IC is going to run at a TTL logic level. If I connect it to a 3 volt, it's going to run at a CMOS logic level. Okay, so this is pin number four and it's VCCIO. And here it is power and this is definitely power input. So we put it there. Oh, I, I made a mistake. So, VCC IO goes here and pin number four goes here. Yeah. Okay. Now the next is ground. Now if you look here, you can see that pin seven, eighteen, and twenty-one are all ground. So we took note of that. So GND and let's do for the first one pin seven power input ground. Okay, now what I'm going to do since they are all ground. Since they are all ground, what I'm going to do is duplicate them and then change the uh, ring uh, number. Okay, so this would be, this one will be pin 18 and that would be pin 21. Okay, all right, so all these three pins are supposed to be ground. Then we have 3V3 out, okay? The, the IC is able to provide a 3 volt output so that you can use it for other stuff. And that's pin 17, so let's connect that. Okay, so this is um, 3V3, let me put underscore out. And the pin number is 17. Now this is power out. Power out. Okay, let's scroll down. We still have, uh, still have this. We still have this. Okay, so pin 20 is VCC. Pin 20 is VCC. And uh, this VCC actually can take from plus 3.3 to 2, uh, 5. Okay, so that is cool. Uh, this is C, that's pin 20. Uh, sorry, this is not power output, it's supposed to be power input. Okay. All right, the next one would be pin 25, which is analog ground. Uh, two, five, uh, sorry, A ground, A, G, and B. And that is pin number 25. Uh, it's also power input. Then we have pin 8 and pin 24, NC. NC means no, not connected. Is that okay? So usually we don't want those pins to be visible, okay? 
So uh, I'll call them NC and the pin, the first one is pin 8. Okay, now because I don't want it to be visible, you see there is actually a, an electrical type for it, NC, and I'll check don't be visible, okay? But it still has to be there. The fact that you are not connecting it doesn't mean don't uh, don't keep it. It still has to be there. Uh, we still have another NC. We still have another NC. The pin number is 24. And we, also, we don't want it to be visible. Okay. All right. Uh, next is the reset pin. Let's call it, uh, let's just call it reset. So that now it's an input pin, active loop reset pin. This can be used by an external device to reset the FTDR. If not required, can be left unconnected or pulled up to VCC. All right, that's an information that will come in handy when we are creating the circuit around it. All right, so that is pin 19. This is an input pin and the graphic style it's active low, so let me put it on inverted. Um, don't forget, it has to be visible. Okay, we will finish soon. These are some of the boring things you can do. All right, then we have another pin called test, which is pin number 26. It is an input pin. Uh, must be tied to ground for normal operation. So you see, you, you have to always keep notice of these things. We'll come back to this when we are creating the circuit around it. So test, oh, I have to change the electrical type. It's input, all right, but normal line. 27 OSCI, OSCI, and that is pin number 27. Okay, OSCI, uh, input 12 megahertz oscillator cell optional, can be left unconnected for normal operations. Okay, we never even intended to. Then the next is 28, and uh, that is OSCO. OSCO. Oh, actually, the first one has to be, the first one is an input, this one is an output, so that's good. 28 and don't forget to change it to an output pin okay we are getting there don't worry finish soon getting there yes so this we are left with this guy so pin one that is uh txd txd that is pin one and it's an output pin yes uh that's the transmitter okay then we have rx uh, sorry dtr dtr for data terminal ready okay uh dtr is also an output pin and uh, it's connected to pin number two the next one would be rts which is also an output and connected to pin 3. Uh, please be, be spying, right? My eyes are very tired in case I, I miss anything you draw my attention. All right, we have RI. RI is an input pin and is connected to pin number 6. Uh, DSR, data set ready. That is pin number nine. Uh, it's also an input pin. VCD, data carrier detected. That is pin number 10. And uh, DCD is also an input pin. Uh, uh, we have CTS. Yes, CTS. Uh, which is connected to it. number 11. It's also an input pin. Mm. C bus. C bus 4. Which is 12. Okay. It's connected to. It's an IO. It's an IO. So bi directional. 
okay. Uh, the next one is C bus 2. C bus 2. And this is also an, uh, uh, it's connected to pin number 13, please. In, under no circumstance should you miss the pin number, okay? If you miss the pin number, it means that you physically miss the pin, the actual pin on, on the thing, okay? So be careful with that. Very careful with that. All right, the next one is C bus 3. C bus 3, and that is pin 14. That is also IO, so bidirectional. Then we have uh, the next one, C bus 1. C bus 1, which is also pin connected to pin 22, bidirectional. Uh, then the last one, C bus 0. C bus 0, uh, which is pin 2, 3, bidirectional. Okay, so that that is that. That is... Uh, that is all we have to do from the data sheet. Okay, so now we have to create uh, a physical IC. And again, I'm going to design things according to my preference. Okay, so first draw my box as usual. And then put my power. So I have three ground over here. Put them on the bottom because uh, yeah, they are ground. And then we also have analog ground. In fact, analog ground should definitely be connected to. And let, let me arrange the pins in order of increasing number. Okay. Then we have the power sources VCCIO. First of all, will be VCC, and then the next will be VCCIO, and this is an output power source which I may probably never use. Put that here. Uh, these guys are the most interesting of them all. Okay. Now, in the schematic, you can see that. D plus is up, D minus is down, right? So since I'm creating my own thing, I could actually do the same thing. So D plus up, D plus, D minus down, okay? Okay. Then uh, the output, the output, guys, uh, where is RxD? It's like I never did for RxD. RxD. There should be a pin labeled RxD. RxD, RxD, RxD. We had a saw TxD. Why is there no RxD? There should be RxD. Yes, pin number two. So TxD is 30. Where is it? Whoa. Ah, this is the QFM. So TSD is 1, RSD is 5. So how did I miss it? RSD, can anyone? Oh, here. Okay. So let's put it in. RXD, now RSD is supposed to be input, and that's number 5. Oh, no. That's number five. RxD is pin number five. Here is an input asynchronous. Right? Asynchronous input. Okay. So usually these guys would go to the Arduino. So I like to keep them here like that. So all these signals here, they have to go on the output line. Bring them here, keep RSD closer to TXD, 
and I also need DTR for auto resetting. Uh, then let me put some space between this guy. In fact, let me have some more space between this guys. I'll use it for something. Okay, so DSR, DCD, CCS. Okay, this guy should be here. Um, the not connected guys, I'm gonna keep them down here. Okay, then reset test oc all these guys let's see what are we supposed to do with them if we don't have anything to do with them okay so reset active load if not required come left unconnected good tests um, must be tied to ground so if it must be tied to ground then i would like to keep it closer to my ground Okay, so as a tie to ground, uh, OC, OSCI can be left unconnected and this two can be left unconnected. So if that's the situation, if that's the case, then these guys, I'm going to pack them all here since I don't have any juice for them. Let me actually move this a bit up and put them in the middle. I want to be needing them and keep them there. Okay. Probably this is too isolated. Once. Okay. 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 All right. Then the C bus, which are GPIOs, in case we don't need them, what do we do with them? Let's find out. So CBAS I.O. Configurable CBAS output only. The function of this thing is to configure blah, 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 blah. Uh, don't need it. Function of this thing. Okay. So when the, when the uh, IC is actually uploading code, we want to be able to see the signals. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, we have this thing here. It says that configurable C bus I O function of this pin is configured in the device internal from Factory default setting is TXD and C. What do I do to it if I don't need it? Okay. Hmm. RX, RX LED and yes, these guys we have a need for them. That is C bus one and C bus. C bus one and C bus two, we have a need for them, but the rest I can't say much. Okay. Here, let's see. Function of this pin is configured in device internal e from factory default to power enable. C C bus signal should be used with 10k pull up. No, I'm not using it. So I'm going to keep these guys out of the way. I'm going to keep them out of the way. Whoa, I just mistakenly changed my grid. Uh, so always remember to keep this on 50 mils. Okay. Oh, uh, come on, what's happening? Instead of M, I keep pressing, I keep pressing the M, which changes the grid. Okay, so let's keep these guys here. In fact, I think I may have to stretch out my, 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 whatever. Uh, okay. It got distorted. Okay. I won't be using this, guys. So let me just stretch this a little bit. And then move. There's a, are you guys still there? Oh, you've left me alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So, we will be using C bus, uh, these guys, for indication, okay? When, whenever there is an activity, and by activity I mean there is an upload or download on the, on the, 
on the UART line, we will use it to see. So the resistor will be, uh, the LED will be blinking all the way through, right? So that's what we're going to configure these guys for. All right, so put them here and then put this one here. Now, if you, oh, we still have 30 minutes, uh, we will finish. Okay. Put this here and put that there. Oh, we are almost done. We are almost done. We are almost done. But let's let's check this guy out. This uh, uh, let's let's let me find. It. Okay, it's it's actually an IOP. Okay, it's an IOP. All right. Now, as usual, we have to do the normal thing. That is set the data for this particular library. Okay, so again we go to DigiKey because they do so well in, in, in putting this information. So DigiKey Electronics, and we search for. Remember, we are pro, we are designing for FT two three two RL. Okay. FT232RL. So it's set for rates. Let's see if DigiKey has something for us. Okay, so it's definitely this. Okay, so yeah, that is that is the guy we are looking for. So click on it to select it and then ah so good so the information that we need manufacturer of course that's future uh technologies right uh, future technology devices international that's the ftdi all right so let's also do set the value so i'm going to put a field here manufacturer Manufacturer, yes, and that will be future. Oh, I didn't actually copy it. Okay, future technology limited. Uh, product number, product number, product number, that will be. Oh, come on. Product number. Okay, you have this here. This real thing is just how they package the, the thing, okay? How they distribute it. Uh, the serial description. Description, we, we have detailed description. So let me just put, uh, okay, let me put description here and then label this detail. Detailed description. Okay, so the detailed description is going to be this. Technically, the description should just be here. Let me delete the detailed description. All right, finally, there is a data sheet. So you right click and co uh, copy the address and then put it there, the data sheet. There are some, I, I remember recently I ordered stuff from China and the, the lady who was supplying the component requested for the data sheet. I was like, how, how should I be chasing for data sheets? So since then I started adding data sheets to the components that I create. It's very, very important. Okay. So this is FT1, FT, FT232. If you search for something like that, it should come up. FT232RL. Then uh, also, if you search for UART, come up. If you search for USV, come up. If you search for USB bridge, come up. Okay. All right. And the last thing we need to do is to set the footprint. So let's see what footprint information we have there. That would be package. So this is a 22 SSOP. Is that okay? Now take note of this. Okay, take note of this. 5.30 mm. 
So to do that, we go to, and this is again, it's a standard package, so we don't have to design it for ourselves. And we are looking for SSOP. Now, SSOP, I think it's also part of SOP. Okay, so SSOP. Uh, these things could can sometimes be SSOP. I think we may have to look for a, an equivalent. Okay, SS, SS. Okay, good. So we have SSOP and we are looking for what? Five point something. Uh, we are looking for 5.3 mm. I'm looking for one S SSOP 28. Unfortunately, okay not unfortunately yet this is 28 and you can see five points what three over here is that okay so that is definitely what we are looking at now take note you see we have ssop 28 3.9 and we have ssop 5.8 so if you just keep the fact that oh it's an ssop 28 you may go and select the wrong package okay so always make sure you have the right details and again like I said, you should always make sure uh, if you are interested in uh, 3D models, check whether your thing has 3D model. Sometimes when you come to check for 3D models, you won't see it. If you are not seeing anything, try turning these things on. Okay. Sometimes the 3D model is there, but it is hidden. So when you turn them on, you get it. So this is the one that we are looking for. This is the one that we are looking for. So we keep it and that is it again you can see that some things are colored here we don't want that that means they will be showing on the on, on the components so we go back to the certain component settings on check on check and yes all right so we are done we are done creating you see that creating an ic here is actually very simple uh, let me just do a little modification. Okay, space this thing out a bit. Uh, M to move it. Okay, and then I can actually bring these guys to down so that these big boys, because they are the most important signals over here, I can give them some spacing. Uh, yes, I think we are good to go. We save it and then go back to our key card. I think we can finish this. That means definitely in the morning we can start the PCB aspect. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so let's let's place it. Add components. We need FT, FT232RL. And you can see that our library is what featuring. Now, if you look at let's let's compare our library with uh, what we have so the same f c 232 rl what we uh, the one that comes from uh, that comes with a key card yeah okay so you see they they have designed it in their own way yeah that's quite similar to ours this this time oh usually i prefer doing that inner yellow thing so let's go back now you can actually, uh, you, I think you should be able to go to properties and go to edit symbol. And that should bring up the same component. Oh, it's actually already opened. Oh, that's not it. Yes, it's already opened. It's already, it should be. Uh, here okay so that is this and then as usual i'll set this to 0 0.3 mm right click on it again and uh, properties fill with background i always like that yellow thing and let me put the name inside it that's so that if you choose it you know you know make a mistake ft232 rl okay RL. Let me just do that. Probably make it somehow bigger, 2.5 mm, and bold. Yep. 
you can never miss this all right close now since we've updated the library you see it doesn't automatically update itself the way you update it is go to tools and update symbol from library and that gets it updated okay so anytime we make an update on a component it doesn't automatically reflect in uh, everywhere you have used it so you have to do that okay so now let's set the circuit setting up the circuit we still need uh, to contact this because this is what is going to guide us okay going to guide us all right so when we're designing this we talked about this particular signal okay and i said that they are differential pins Tomorrow, God willing, when we start routing them, uh, you would see how the why they have to be differential. I'm going to talk about all this kind of stuff. So these pins we've already provided. So we need to copy and put them on this signal. They have to be connected here. So from here to there, from here to there. Okay, that's that. Okay. That's the data lines of the USB have to be connected to this. And remember when this, according to the data sheet, the reset and all those guys, when we don't need them, okay, when we don't need the reset, we can leave it unconnected. So to leave it unconnected, we have to put this unconnected symbol on it. Then for the OCI, this and that can be left unconnected. This one too can be left unconnected. So we do the same for them. Okay. So you see how simple it is when you have to create the circuit around an IC. Okay. This is the reason I hardly use modules in my work. They, they just take unnecessary spaces. Okay. Then when we come here, we know that all these guys are supposed to be tied to ground. So quickly without wasting time, I'll do that. Connect the ground. Uh, come in here, borrow. Borrow a ground and then uh, hook it up and tie all of them to ground. Tie all of them to ground. Okay. Now, back here, since we are using this for a specific purpose, uh, we can actually tie the two of them to, because we are using it for an Arduino. So we will tie it to five volts since we are using the five volts uh, logic level. Okay, so we tie this, and again, please make it a habit. Anytime you have an IC, put a decoupling capacitor on it. Now I'm going to borrow two decoupling capacitors one for each pin so i'll do this make it a habit okay anytime you have an ic make sure its power line has the coupling capacitors move that here and not there okay pick the next link link and uh, it's a decoupling capacitor so this has to be tied to ground okay so let me borrow a ground from here uh, rotate it and just put it there okay all right then the three volts the three volts line we are not going to use it according to the data sheet when if, if we are not using the vote the three volts line what do we do the output from blah 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 the pin should be decoupled to ground using 100 nanofarad capacitor is that okay so whether we want to use it or not we still have to do that so we'll borrow a capacitor from here and then decouple it oh, sorry connect it there uh, move it up a bit connect it here and also connect here however this has to be about 100 nanofarads 100 nanofarads okay all right good so we are done with this side let's go to this side now this rxd pin of this ic has to connect to the tx this is how you add connections actually uh, happen 
Take it as right now, when, as I speak, my mouth speaks and your ear listens. When your mouth also speaks, my ear listens. I don't talk mouth to mouth. That remains something else. Okay? <laughs> that means something else. So that's the nature of ES, uh, UART connections. Two, I, two devices or ICs are communicating. So the TX stands for transmitting pin. Okay? So if you connect the transmitting pin of the uh, at mega to the transmitting pin of the FTD, FT, uh, FT232, it will just be like two people talking and no one is listening. Is that okay? You wouldn't achieve any result. So what you do is we have to connect this and that. And we also need this guy. Okay. So we will pick the RX from the microcontroller and since it is rx it is like the ear it has to connect to the map which is the tx of the rft232 okay then we pick the we pick the tx which is like the which is like the the, the map of the microcontroller and we connect it to the ears of the FT232. So this is how, this is what will make it possible for the Arduino to send code to the computer and the computer to also send code to the Arduino. Is that okay? This is how this okay. Now in in the situation where you don't need maybe your computer to send code back to the, uh, the, the you don't need your Arduino to send code back to the computer. You can choose to ignore this uh, RX pin on the microcontroller you can still just work with one signal okay good now this dtr is very very important we need is so whenever you are uploading code onto that we know there is something called auto reset that happens auto reset before the code can go the reset button has to be pressed but you see you cannot do that manually so what we do is we hook this DTR pin to the reset pin so that it can do that for us automatically. But to do that, you have to uh, connect, the, uh, you have to couple the two signals using a capacitor. So something like this. Okay. You couple the, remember, when a capacitor is in series with a signal, it is coupling. Okay. So after this, we will put we will bring our R, uh, RST, okay? That is why I put this signal here. So we connect our RST here. That means now we would be able to perform auto resetting. These signals, we don't have use for them because we are not using hardware controlled uh, UART, okay? So we can just block them out. Uh, another ones, okay, so C0, C1, we said we could use, if you look down here, we can use them as uh, Rx indicators, Rx led, so C1 is Rx led, C2 is uh, Tx led. Now, the way you do this is that you, you can copy up to this point, okay, rotate it, and hook this up here. Rotate it and hook this up here. Okay. Uh, let me let me uh, clean things up a bit. Let me clean things up a bit. Okay. I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this briefly, uh, shortly. Sorry. Okay. So then hook this up. Okay. Now this this pin here would be oscillating in accordance with uh, data. When uh, so this is on the bar zero and it's a TX. So when the when the when FT two three two is transmitting data to the Arduino, okay, this pin will be oscillating. So when it oscillates, it will be serving as a ground pin for this. That means when it is low current will flow the led will turn on to show that oh yes something is happening when it is high remember the led is a diode 
So when it is high, that means it will go to five volts, and five volts, five volts, that means it will block current, the LED will turn off. Is that okay? So that is how we use them for indication. So I'll copy this and then put that here. In fact, let me probably do this so that it doesn't take too much space. I'll move this here. I'm just cleaning things up. Done soon. Okay. And then put this here. All right, and probably close this gap a bit. Put this here. Okay, then now I can connect them up. But let me move this up. Okay, so this goes here. And let's delete this. And that goes here. Okay, so let, let's give them a label. The bus one, bus one is actually RX. So you call this, let's call this RX. Let's call this RX. And let's call this CX. Okay, so when there is transmission of data, these LEDs are going to be switching on and off like that. Okay, so that we can see that there is an activity. All right, give me just two uh, minutes of time. all right sorry thank you for your patience all right so now let's check the last signal we have bus two three and four uh i don't think we'll be needing them so, and in this situation where we don't need them what do we do oops let's just cancel them out so put that 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 meaning that we don't actually need them and just that we have mm -hmm. finished routing this uh, connecting this okay so what i would probably do next is to arrange this neatly uh, somewhere yeah i'll probably take my time to reorganize this okay but that's it we are we are finished this is all of the <laughs> circuits we need to design an arduino uno board yeah so any questions any questions You are done. You are done with the circuit. So tomorrow we can start with routing. Okay, so we are done. Yeah, so any persons, any persons, any persons. Yeah, guys, come up, come up. Let's have some five minutes of discussion and then, uh, yeah, Christine, go ahead. So you mean the circuit, the board layer shouldn't be inside here? Yes. Yes, yes. We are going to do something else, or then we are going to use a different program for the board layer. Still with heater, but it will be a different board. This is just used for the schematic. Okay. Now, there is something else we have to do by then, because a lot of people are not online. I will wait and do it in the morning. Okay. Also, uh, clean this circuit up a bit. Rearrange stuff. Okay. But then, technically, that is it for the cinematic. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I've left anything out. Uh, basically, I've left anything out.
So the next stage will be to assign the component footprints and then start the board layout. Yeah, so we could definitely do that tomorrow. Yeah. Any, any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Probably let's see the rest of the time. We have just a minute to do some cleaning up. Uh, this guy is going to actually mm -hmm. no. That will make it look like it's on the next set. I'm going to do that. Mm, I like the top. Okay, I just don't like how. Yeah, if you have any question, you can, you can ask. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and then. Uh, probably this guy, let's give him his own box. And we will actually be printing out the board and have. A session probably early January on how to solder the, the component. Okay, you solder it, you build it for yourself, and then you can keep it. Uh, so we'll be doing that. Okay, I see a C. Okay, I think I will just have to do this for you. Okay, uh, Okay, I'm gonna draw a here, and this I would call. So this is FT two three two R L programmer. Uh, let me just call it USB bridge. Set a custom, you can set a custom sheet size. Okay, so let's see. Uh, if you're going to maintain the A4, the width is 297, we'll keep that. So over here, I have uh, 297 mm by the try 160 mm. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, uh, so the other way around, 160 mm by 297 mm. Okay, and I can reduce it just a little bit. Okay, so that will be the height, 150, so let's go 140 mm. And then we have to add. One for the mm, so one four five mm. Yes, just the right amount of E. And I'll get rid of this and now I'll take it. So let's actually even reduce this. Let's do this graph a little bit. This small graph here. Oh, let's just leave it like that. Leave it like that. Again, this is not necessary. Just leave it like that. Okay. So that is all. We are done. We are done. We are done. I think yeah, you guys have done well today. Uh, if, if there is any question, yes, I will be happy to take it. If there is no question, I'm going to uh, put this image on the page. So those who are building along, you can also check it out and then um, try it. I would uh, leave the next minute to upload all the programs and then. Uh, you can all the videos, okay? So, yeah, uh, thank you for joining. See you again, nine good hours tomorrow. Please, tomorrow is going to be fantastic. You don't want to miss any of the lectures because that's where the actual PCB design will be taking place, okay? So, make sure you don't miss anything. All right, I'm doing a nice ride with you.
see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.